So I want to start this last part of chapter three by talking a little bit more about comparative statics and why we do it. So comparative statics, the usefulness of it is it's useful for, for making predictions. And those are predictions for price and quantity. Okay, so with that said, we talked earlier about how supply can shift and demand can shift. And what we want to be able to say here is what then happens if we put everything on the same graph like this and we see our equilibrium price and quantity like this. Then as we shift the demand, for instance, and it shifts out like this, taking us from D1 to D2, that as demand increases, what we see is that the equilibrium quantity increases and the equilibrium price increases. Now, what could cause demand to increase? This could be increasing because the population is going up. This could be increasing because the income is rising and this is a normal good. It could be going up because the substitute good price is increasing, or it could be going up because the complementary goods price is falling. It could also be going up because the future price is expected to rise. What you see here are five things that cause demand to increase. Now, the law of demand is not at work here. The law of demand would apply only to the price of the good itself changing. That's none of these things. Now, the law of supply is at work, because for the law of supply, the end result is that the price goes up and we move along the supply curve. But it was the demand that shifted on its own, with the end consequence being that. Now, I can draw this exact same graph. And instead now I can have the supply curve shifting out. Let's call it S1, S2. And now what we would see is that my equilibrium price falls and my equilibrium quantity increases. Now what could cause supply to increase? Well, these would be things like cost falling, more firms, lower taxes, um, lower expected prices. Same kind of thing as at work here. The law of supply is not at work. <laughs> the law of supply is not at work because the entire supply curve is shifting. But the law of demand is at work because I'm moving along that curve with the key consequence that I can predict what goes on here. Now, I could reverse both of these as well. What if I had my demand curve decreasing? If my demand curve was decreasing, then we would see that my equilibrium price is falling and my equilibrium quantity is falling. Alternatively, I could have my supply curve decreasing. And in that case, my equilibrium price would be rising, equilibrium quantity would be falling. 
hopefully these four shouldn't be that tough. Um, but this should be pretty straightforward. These four circled things being the predictions of what would happen to the equilibrium price and quantity if one of these things happened. The more complicated part of this would be is what if both curves are shifting. So for instance, what happens if I draw this out, but I have both demand increasing and supply increasing. So meaning I go from D1 to D2, S1 to S2. Looks like my equilibrium price is staying the same, and my equilibrium quantity is increasing. So this, <laughs> this may be where it's useful to draw things in different colors so that things don't seem uh, too confusing. But in this case, if supply and demand shifted the same amount, this would be the result. Now, this is very important that I shifted them the same amount. It wouldn't necessarily have to be that way. What if two events happened? One event happening to demand curve, one event happening to the supply curve, but the shift was differential, meaning, for instance, what if supply shifted more than demand. <clears throat> then it would look like this. meaning that my equilibrium price would not fall, and now my equilibrium quantity would rise. What if demand shifted more than supply? Now, my equilibrium price is rising, and my equilibrium quantity is still going up. Now, three different scenarios of how much it shifted, like which one shifted more than the other, but in all three scenarios, notice what happened to the equilibrium quantity. It all they increased in all three cases. When the same when you have two curves shifting, and no matter which shifts more. One of these variables will be unambiguous, meaning that we know with certainty what will happen. And in this case, it is quantity, because no matter which one shifts more than the other, the quantity always goes up. But the other variable is going to be ambiguous, meaning that there's some uncertainty. And that's what we see with price. Price could either stay the same, go down, or go up. Because what you need to know is you need to know how much they shifted and if they shifted more than the other. That's what creates the uncertainty.
Now, just to draw these out so that you have them available to you, I could draw this same graph. Where I decreased both. Now, equilibrium quantity will always fall. Equilibrium price will be basically ambiguous. That's how you determine which one will be ambiguous. Shift them by the same amount. The one that does not change will be your ambiguous variable. Because alternatively, You can see here that for supply falling and demand falling, I've been able to create a scenario where the equilibrium quantity was always falling, equilibrium quantity was always falling, but here my price was falling, but here my price was rising. I could also do it where supply was going up but demand was going down. Now, my quantity becomes ambiguous, stays the same, but my equilibrium price is falling. Which would mean that I could then add the other two graphs here, and I'll do that very quickly here, so that you can see it being done. Now I have my price falling <coughs> and my quantity falling. Alternatively, I could have it where do you want to supply one? Where I'm shifting this a little bit. And now my quantity is increasing right here. Equilibrium price is falling. Equilibrium price is falling. Now my equilibrium quantity is falling. Equilibrium quantity is increasing. Alternatively, we could have my demand falling, or sorry, my supply falling, my demand rising. Quantity is still staying the same, but now my prices are going to go up. Equilibrium price rises, equilibrium quantity is ambiguous. And you could draw the other two graphs to make it look like, um, uh, like these two. I'll draw them. Right, and uh, what we would see is that as my supply is falling, 
First, they're going to have a falling by a little bit. Or alternatively, I give my quantity to fall. But in all three cases, the equilibrium price is rising. It's just that we don't know what happens to quantity. So the key thing as you're seeing this on the exam, and we're starting to think about the exam and even the homeworks, what you're trying to think of here is I'm going to give you some sort of event that's happening. You need to think about whether it affects the supply or the demand curve or both. And then you need to think about, does it cause it to increase or decrease? So you can then draw the graph appropriately.